TikTok has now pulled down the, quote, letter to America hashtag from its search function, but not until days after it made videos on Osama bin Laden's infamous document go viral. The Al-Qaeda founder wrote the letter about a year after the September 11th attacks. It's an evil, twisted justification for the slaughter of nearly 3,000 Americans. Massive and bipartisan backlash after many users posted videos actually praising the letter. Some of these young folks spreading uh, abhorrent, ridiculous views that somehow justify Osama bin Laden terrorist attack. Why did TikTok take so long to take this down? For someone on TikTok to somehow suggest that this is America's fault or that bin Laden, who killed thousands of innocent Americans, was right is absolutely disgusting and further evidence that we need to ban TikTok or force a sale. It's toxic. Uh, TikTok is toxic to our kids. Uh, you could say that. One op-ed asks of the videos, how did we get here? The answer, even if they hadn't read bin Laden's infamous letter, young people have already been spoon-fed the leftist messaging that dominates college campuses, digital media, and social media discourse. The Wall Street Journal editorial board with this. A serious question, though, is how and how much these platforms are shaping American education and political discourse. And the New York Post, their front page looks like this, world gone madman. TikTokers now praise Osama bin Laden in shocking new low. Jason Rant, Seattle radio host and author of What's Killing America, joins me now. You know, the education department is absolutely uh, responsible for this. They have allowed this kind of rhetoric. They have taught this kind of rhetoric. They've supported it. They've enabled it. Well, yesterday, they announced a new list of universities, which, believe it or not, actually involves K through 12 schools, OK? And they're investigating because of reported incidents of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Among them are three colleges here in New York, no surprise, Columbia, Cornell, Cooper Union. Um, and these investigations come as leaders of prominent Jewish organizations are urging the Biden administration to take an aggressive, proactive approach to addressing the incidences on college campuses. But so far, I don't see the Biden administration doing anything about it. Well, they're in a really tough spot politically because the fact of the matter is that letter, if you put one of the squad members at the bottom of it and you just took the portions about Israel and some of the portions about the United States, it would sound like they were the authors. It's not just college professors who are talking about this and high school educators, but it's politicians coming from the progressive movement of the Democrat Party, and they seem to not understand at the Biden White House what to do about yes. them. All they have to do is call it out. I get, it is wrong. Yeah. I get that there are political implications with the base actually believing this, but you know, God forbid you do something just, that's actually the right thing and call it out. We just got to talk and call out the fact that there is such a double standard when it comes to um, you know accountability on social media. TikTok has a video that's not on there for like an hour or two. This is for days. Okay, it, it is basically um, championing uh, Osama bin Laden's. Uh, mission to kill 3,000 Americans. But then under President Trump, do you remember all the Facebook posts and the, the Twitter posts that were taken down because people were questioning the vaccine and COVID and, and all of that? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's disgusting that this sort of stuff actually exists on, on, on TikToks, considering most young Americans actually get their news from TikTok. That says a lot about where our future is headed. Yeah, that's a terrifying aspect of all of this. And, and I, I'm kind of on the fence. And on, on the one hand, obviously, it needs to be taken down. I'm disgusted that it took so long. But on the other hand, it's rather instructive to learn that these are the th types of views that these folks are having. Because unless we truly understand what they're saying, how they're saying it, what's inspiring them, we're not really going to be able to, for lack of a better term, sort of counter program it. Because we have to convince these are young people. They're going to become our next lawmakers. And if they go into those kinds of positions with these views about Israel, I mean, obviously, the implications of our relationship with Israel and our 
relationship with American Jews is going to get very, very complicated and perhaps ugly. So uh, uh, part of me just, I'm glad that now a lot more people are picking up on the fact yeah. that these young folks have been indoctrinated to this degree, because now we can actually push back in a more meaningful way. Yeah, I think uh, Mike Gallagher put it perfectly. These people are idiots. And, and by idiots, we're not yeah. actually using that as a, you know, an insult, calling somebody dumb. They are uneducated. That's the bottom line. And they're pushing this negative propaganda because why? Because they're professors. These liberal colleges are allowing it and they're actually pushing the messages thanks to congresswomen on the far left that are actually enabling this kind of violence. Um, I want to switch gears here for a second. Uh, shocking instances of anti-Semitism all across the country like uh, we've been seeing on college campuses as Israel's war against Hamas rages on. This video out of New York shows someone vandalizing a large menorah on the front lawn of a Long Island home, the damage estimated at some $2,000. I mean, in California, another case, police arresting a suspect in the death of a Jewish man who fell during a confrontation between pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian demonstrators. The suspect is, wait for it, a professor at a community college. And then in Massachusetts, backlash after the city of North Andover approved a permit approved a permit to fly a Palestinian flag over the town commons. A Jewish leader there spoke to Fox and Friends. Watch this. Frankly, I think they're just a bunch of cowards. They took a legal, um, a legal initiative, a legal statement from, from council in their hearts. I know every single one of them did not want to raise their flag, but they put their own personal um, worries ahead of the town. And that's not what leadership does. Why so cowardly do these leaders actually fall in line with an organization that promotes terrorism? Well, it's the same reason why they fell in line with Black Lives Matter and Antifa thugs. It's, it's exactly the same. They have a radical viewpoint. Some of these lawmakers agree with the radical viewpoints, and others are terrified of them. But the fact of the matter is, if you're terrified of these people, understand what's going to happen if you don't actually get in their way. Because violence begets more violence. Hate begets more hate. And we're seeing the anti-Semitic incidences happening yeah. all over the country. I just had a story here this week about a man who had an Israeli flag up. He went after the person who tried to take it down. He got beat up. Yeah, it's, it's really despicable. Uh, Jason, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.